The Triassic period is not that well known for big pharaopods, as most of the Triassic land masses were dominated by big Pseudosuchians such as Postosuchus, Sorosuchus, and the absolute monster Fasolosuchus. However, in the late Triassic, there were two groups on the forefront of the dinosaur revolution, and that are the Herrerasaurids and the Coelophysoids. Last time we spoke about these groups, we talked about the Herrerasaurids. This time around, it's the Coelophysoids, as one of their members is named after a film monster. Godzilla has Japanese origins, hence why this predator isn't called Godzillasaurus, but instead the Japanese version, Gojirasaurus. Gojirasaurus, the Godzilla lizard, is one of the biggest pharaopods in Triassic North America and by extension worldwide, alongside the fellow basal Coelophysoids, Lillian Sternus from Germany and Lophostrophius from France, as well as the Herrerasaurus, Herrerasaurus, and the new pharaopod Zugbysaurus from Patagonia, among others. Remember, Pangaea was one big continent back then, so terrestrial animals could travel wide and far. The three big Coelophysoids mentioned before were living in New Mexico, United States, Germany, and France. Funny, cause Gojirasaurus is name is of Japanese descent, but it lived in Mexico. When was the last time you've seen a Japanese in Mexico? Oh sorry, just realized it's New Mexico and not Mexico. Sorry, I, I just think I'm too stupid to understand this. Anyway, Scorchiosaurus Kwai was named in 1997 by Ken Carpenter. The Ankylosaur specialist definitely has good taste in naming, as Godzilla Lizard is quite fitting for one of the biggest pharaohs of its time. Scorchiosaurus would have been a nightmare to run into, perfect size for hunting humans, fast, agile, sharp teeth and small but sharp claws. However, how does a pharaoh even acquire this size so early on the dinosaur timeline? Well, it could come down to the fact that the two Sauriscian dinosaur groups, pharaohs and Sauropodomorpha, held an evolutionary arms race. To what this ultimately led in the early Jurassic, well, check out the video The Amazing Pharaoh Nobody Talks About, a mind-blowingly big animal and the pre-run in the early Jurassic that could only evolve because Gojirosaurus and the Coelophysoids made their moves so early on. Gojirosaurus itself would have been up to 6 meters 20 feet in length, with a weight of 190 kilograms of 420 pounds. Jeez, that size is comparable to some of today's biggest big cats as well as the biggest dromaeosaurs. You know, Euteraptor, Dakotoraptor, Ostroraptor, Kilobator and so on. However, except for size in some of them, there is another underrated aspect of early pharaohs and that is their speed. Coelophysis was a speed demon, being able to produce a velocity of 65 km per hour, roughly 40 miles an hour. Speculative evolution. Today we are going to be assuming that Gojirosaurus is a Coelophysoid and not a neopharopod such as Dilophosaurus, as some studies suggest. As the Coelophysoid, Gojirosaurus would have been very fast as youngsters, reaching speeds of 50 km per hour or 31 miles per hour or more when hunting. Ooh, brothers in the air. So they can hunt small mammals, synapses, insects and maybe even other dinosaurs, plus to minimize conflicts with other, especially sub-adult and adult Gojirosaurus. Once Gojirosaurus is fully grown, it specializes on bigger and slower prey, with it still producing a maximum speed of 35 km per hour at 21.7 miles per hour. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! As always, you know, take these estimates with a big grain of salt, since it's not only spec evil, but Coelophysis is also a Coelophysid, which is a more distinct and probably speed specialized subgroup of Coelophysoidia, while the Gojirosaurus is a basal Coelophysoid. Now we've heard about the speed, but what about the rest of the Gojirosaurus' toolkit? Coelophysids had long, slender builds, a narrow snout and a flexible jaw, which pretty much indicates the meat are feeding on small prey or flesh grazing, maybe. Either way, they would use their teeth as razors or steak knives, which is to cut flesh. The forelimbs surely could have also been a restraint weapon for smaller prey, the Triassic version of the raptor prey restraint model. Lastly, Coelophysoids also had the typical large skull fenestra seen in later pharaohs. So with all that in mind, how did the Gojirosaurus actually do in its environment? Well firstly, Gojirosaurus did live in the Bull Canyon formation alongside many walks of life, including the fish Semionotus. Temnospondyls, such as the Apache Soros, once an absent, two more indeterminate avimetatarsalians alongside Gojirosaurus itself, the Phytosaur, Machiroprosopus, further Pseudosuchians, including Adosaurus, Paratypophorax, Typophorax, Revoltosaurus, and the infamous Postosuchus, among others. Further raptors include the Vanclaevia, perhaps the weirdest bloke I've ever seen. 
and the early turtle Chinlachelus. Ultimately, after the Coelophysoids vanished about 183 million years ago, there were already bigger predators around that should take their place to keep the theropod revolution going. Dilophosaurus and Solchiovenator would be the best examples for North America and Europe. That's it for this video, smash the thumbs up, the bell and the subscribe as only legends do that and I know you all are. Also check out Instagram for fitness motivation and inspiration as I'm on a mission to help more people get fit. Furthermore you can also check out Twitter to hear my thoughts on all kinds of dinosaur stuff. And with that I wish you a splendid day or evening, goodbye.